friends! Welcome to the old Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise and this little lumpy lizard here is Arthur Morgan, my gargoyle gecko. There are over 6,000 lizard species and they have evolved some incredible adaptations to thrive in almost every ecosystem on every continent, except Antarctica, of course. Today we will be talking about one of the weirdest and coolest of those adaptations, gecko's crazy feet. And I will share with you my list of favorite gecko feet. Not all gecko feet are the same. There are two main types. The first kind is just the standard lizard feet, toes and claws. They're okay, but certainly nothing to do a whole video about. No, no. Today we'll be talking about the iconic sticky toes found on about 60% of the 1500 or so gecko species. These guys have taken the evolution of climby toes to a whole other level, like themselves when they climb. Now I am going to warn you that this gets a bit sciencey. I really hope you stick around, but if that's not your thing and you just want the high level one sentence explanation so you can go about your day, here goes. Geckos are magic. Here, you can jump to the bloopers and I will see you next time. Bye. Are you still here? Great. I was hoping you would stay. Okay, where was I? Right, gecko toe toes. So you might think that these sticky gecko toes have evolved their magic feet from one common ancestor, but they actually evolved separately on 11 lineages of modern geckos and at least nine lineages of extinct ones. That is really unusual for such a specific trait across many related species. Because this trait evolved separately so many times, there are a lot of different types of sticky toes to better adapt to where each species lives, but they all function using the same principles. No, don't go that way. But what are those principles? How does it work? Well, figuring out how geckos are able to not only stick to virtually anything at any angle, but walk or even run while doing it has baffled scientists for decades. And it wasn't for lack of trying. Understanding how geckos pull off their gravity-defying feats, feats and duplicating a self-cleaning, infinitely reusable adhesive would have countless uses in manufacturing, commercial applications, or even military use. So a lot of very smart people were working hard on solving this problem. Before 2000, it was thought that geckos might be secreting a sort of reusable glue to help them stick, like little tiny post-it notes. Other theories posited that it was static electricity, or friction, or even tiny suction cups on the gecko's feet. But they were wrong. Ha! Wrong! Shut up! <laughs> Using a strong enough microscope, scientists found that gecko feet were covered with hundreds of thousands of microscopic hairs called setae. Each setae breaks into hundreds of even smaller spatula-shaped hairs called spatulae. <laughs> really original, guys. <laughs> the millions of spatulae and setae they split off from can adhere to things on the molecular level. It was Professor Robert Full of the University of California, Berkeley, who concluded that they use something called Van der Waals force, which is an intermolecular force created by induced polarizations of molecules. I don't really know exactly what that means, but it sounds pretty smart, eh? Anyways, science. <laughs> This van der Waals force is extremely weak, but as the saying goes, many hands make light work. With millions of these tiny points of contact, each generating a tiny amount of van der Waals force, the cumulative force is more than enough to support a gecko. In fact, if you were to pull hard enough on these very stubborn geckos with all their hairs engaged at once firmly sticking to something, theoretically you could rip their tiny feet off. So that was horrifying. What a terrible thought, right? I know what might make you feel better. Helping out my channel. So go on and hit that like button. That tiny little action will help me and my channel a whole lot and it will make you feel great. Go ahead, go give it a shot. That's better, right? 
Now, if they can generate that much force with their grippy, grippy feety feet, how can their tiny legs break them free so that they can walk? The answer is kind of neat. To illustrate, check out my dad trying to rip this phone book in half. But with a little change in technique, looks impressive, eh? Now, my dad is pretty strong, but that phone book thing is really just a trick. The hardest thing about it was actually finding a phone book in 2021. Anyway, what he's doing is putting pressure on one area and pulling at the right angle to tear each page one at a time in quick succession, making it look like he's mightily tearing it in two. That's kind of what geckos do. The hairs need to be aligned at the right angle to work and geckos with their double jointed totos can adjust the angle of their hairs as they peel back and can break the connection little by little. If you watch closely, you can see this in action with how they curl each of their adorable little toes backwards as they walk. It's so cute. Robert Fole had, like I said, discovered that geckos use Van der Waals force, but there was more to discover, which is where Andre Geem of the University of Manchester comes in. He, along with a team from the Institute for Microelectronics Technology in Russia, were developing synthetic sete to help use as an adhesive called gecko tape. While doing that work, he discovered that geckos also use capillary forces to stick to things. Capillary force works by using attractive forces that are made by the surface tension at a molecular level of the absorbed water that is formed between two surfaces. Basically, they can stick to water. On hydrophilic surfaces, hydrophilic meaning water loving or attracting, geckos rely more on capillary forces. On hydrophobic, water fearing surfaces, it's Van der Waals force all the way, baby! This explains an odd thing I noticed about my own crested gecko, Night Monkey. Crested geckos can easily climb glass, but I noticed that Night Monkey has a bit of a harder time climbing glass outside of her enclosure than she does inside. I also noticed that she has an easier time if the glass is wet, which is counterintuitive because wet glass is more slippery than dry glass, so she should, in theory, stick better to the dry glass. But it wasn't until I started researching for this video that I put it all together. The presence of moisture on the glass, either wet glass or the glass inside of her enclosure with high humidity, actually lets her better use the capillary forces in conjunction with the Van der Waals force. The drier the glass, the more she has to rely on just one type of adhesion. Neat, eh? So that's the quick and dirty description of what's going on. But what I think you guys really want to know is which gecko feet are my favorite. That's right, it's time for... My favorite Cinco Favoritos. First on my list is the lychee gecko. I love lychees. They look like a gecko wearing another gecko as a ring coat. Oh. Um, okay, when I say that out loud, it sounds more terrifying than cute. But lychee geckos are really darn cute. They look like they have little smooshed baseball gloves for feet. They are much bigger than gargoyle gecko feet, but they can still support the weight of a giant lychee. In fact, because of the huge amount of hairs and the surface area that they cover, it will allow a five ounce lizard to hold up to nine pounds. That's 30 times their weight. The next gecko foot is toke geckos because everything is so much cuter when it's forbidden. Just try to touch a normal toke gecko's toes and see what happens. Commonly, when scientists study gecko feet, they will use toke geckos for their observation. I, that seems... that seems reckless. Anyway, my number three is the gargoyle gecko feet because they are kind of like... They're just, they have tiny little feet with the little claws and it isn't until you look really close that you see the groove toe pads and that holds all those sete that aren't working very well right now for some reason. I find it very interesting how different gecko feet can be and the variety even between species from the same relative area. Which brings me to crested geckos and their floppy feet. It's like they have little clown shoes on each of their toes. With crusties, oh please don't jump. <laughs> With crusties you can really see how they curl back to release their grip. It, it's so cool. 
Trustees also have a little bonus toe, which is this little extra clump of tissue at the end of Night Monkey's tail here that also has the same setae and spatulae that her toes do. She can easily support her weight just by this little nubbin. Uh. And finally, we have leaf-tailed geckos. I think out of all the leaf-tailed geckos out there, I'm going to go with satanic leaf-tailed geckos as my favorite. I love their blunt and tiny little toes. I mean, have you even seen these guys? They're, they're, they're gorgeous. They're, I'm sorry, Arthur, but they are. So, there you have it. My favorite gecko feet and why are they so sticky? I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about gecko biology. The natural world still has so much to teach us. Thank you so much for watching and remember to nurture all nature. Bye. Did you know that when someone, when your mind goes, oh my goodness, it's too cute, I want to squeeze it, mm -hmm. your brain's thinking, I'm under attack from cuteness, we must kill it so it will stop being cute. Is that so? That's what science says. Well, that's what Pinterest says science says. I don't know if it's completely true. I still don't get it. Like, what is the point of printing off a tiny piece of the internet to put at your door? Well, the internet wasn't always a thing. People needed I know a that. phone book. I know that, but they don't anymore. Uh, it's a waste of paper, and it hurts the environment, because those things are... They're not tiny books. Maybe the internet goes out, and you want to order a pizza? What do you do? What do you do? How do you order a pizza if there's no internet? Phones still work without oh, internet. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> do you know back in my day, there was one phone... I'm sorry, do you know how the button works? ...stuck to the wall, and Are you, you were tied to that phone with a rope. You could only go so far. I remember when internet came to my high school, and there was actually a phone book for the internet. There was one computer in the library, and there was a phone book next to it of all the web pages you could go to. The search tab did exist, nope. right? Nope. It did Oh, not. dear. That's why you had the phone book. The internet phone book. <laughs> so people print off a piece of the internet to put so that you can use the internet. Back then, yeah. Let me ask you, why? <laughs> <clears throat> Kleenex bits. <laughs> Don't put that in the bloopers. <laughs> Phone's going to think I eat Kleenexes. <laughs> I don't, but <laughs> when you clean up around the lipstick and it's, you inhale them, Is she so soft?